Good morning, Positive Astros. The time is now 825. Today is Monday, March 9th, 2020. My name is Caroline. And my name is Imani. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Channel, Channel 5 News. News. Thought for the day. Um, begin with the end in mind. Always have a plan. Now over to Joseph with the Pledge of Allegiance and the school's pledge. Will you please stand? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge today to do my best. With a great attitude, I will progress. I promise to obey the rules and own my choices each day in school. I'll respect myself and others too, and work hard to constantly improve. I am committed to learn all I can. I am in charge of my life's plan. Now back to the anchors. Thank you, Joseph. Today's announcements. Monday, March 9th, Tuesday is the beginning of a new week. Set goals for yourself and try your best every day. Have a great day. Now over to Mr. Betzel for the words of wisdom. Good morning, Positive Astros. Today is an amazing Monday. All right. So this Monday is a really important day because there's some important announcements, right? And I know you guys are all waiting with bated breath to hear what Miss Helen has to say, but first we've got to talk about a couple of things, okay? So first, it's on. I'll play with it. All right, testing, can you hear me now? All right, so we're gonna hold the mic because I guess I'm not as loud as I used to be. We're okay with that. It's a Monday, we're tired. So important things, okay? Because I know you guys are all waiting to hear from Miss Helen, but first we have to talk about last week. We have to congratulate the classes that had zero tardies last week. Woo! That's Miss Papel's class, Miss Silver's class, Miss Mulligan's class, and Miss Barrows's class. All right. So there were a lot of classes that were only had one tardy all week that really were in the running almost all the way to the end. Guys, this is the last week to earn a popcorn party. So make sure you're in class and sitting in your seat by 840. So what does that really mean? It means that when that first bell rings at 815, get to class. That is your time to get into class. Get started, get prepared to learn for your day. That's what that time is built in for, okay? We have that time built in for you to get prepared and get ready for your day. So if you know that you're running late every day, you need to adjust your time and come a little bit earlier to school because that's really important, okay? So talk to your parents. Say, hey, we got to get to school like 20 minutes earlier. I can be in class at 8.15, and you're not getting me here till 8.35, Mom. Come on. Let's, let's leave 20 minutes earlier, okay? You can tell your parents that you want to be here earlier. They'll be like, well, you want to go to school early? You'll be like, yes, it's the best school in the world. Woohoo! All right, our word for this week. It's a very important word, okay? Our word for this week is empathy. So what is empathy? Empathy is really about understanding how other people feel. So sometimes that's really hard. And so the best way to figure out how somebody else is feel feeling is putting yourself in that same exact situation mentally, like thinking about, well, what would I feel if I was in their place? How would I act? Would I be upset? Would I be sad? Would I be angry? Put yourself in their place, okay? And think about how you would feel if it was happening to you. That's a great way to think about it. So if you saw that somebody was getting picked on and teased and you saw them get really upset, well, wouldn't you get really upset too if you were t picked on and teased? You would, okay? So then you would have empathy for them and be like, hey, I'm so sorry that they were picking on you. That wasn't kind of them. And I understand that that makes, you know, you feel really sad. I'd be really sad in that same situation, okay? That's empathy, understanding how somebody else feels, okay? So, positive astros, I want you to work this week and really think about how somebody else feels in a situation and then show them care and kindness based on that, okay? Because that's really important. When somebody's sad, 
understanding why they're sad, how what situation is making them sad, and then showing them that you care about them, okay? That's our empathy. So now, I know you guys have been holding your breath the whole time I was talking because you want to hear who is going to be dumping that big bucket on Miss Talon's head. Woohoo! Well, I have something else to say first. So I know you're sitting on the edge of your seat. Can you turn the camera this way, Trenton? But first of all, I want to remind everyone what Coach teaches UMP, which is sportsman's like conduct. All right? We know that we don't put our hands on each other, especially during non-contact sports. It is really, really critical. Uh, we had so many kids up here on Friday due to the behavior out on the recess field. So teachers, it is really a good time to go over what the rules and expectations at recess are. And if we have so many sports out there that we're playing that we cannot keep our hands and feet to ourselves, we're going to have to stop playing those. And I, I'd really hate to do that. But at this point, we are seeing way too many kids who are not knowing how to act appropriately out at recess. This is not street ball. You can't say whatever you want. You have to be fair. You have to do play by the rules. No hands in soccer. You don't touch the ball. You have to use your body, your feet. Everyone knows those rules. We also can't put our hands on anybody during soccer. Football, we're not playing any other football besides tossing the football. And tag gets a little pushy too. Some kids are falling to the ground, getting hurt. So I would prefer that we don't do anything with our hands because people, their adrenaline gets up and they get very excited and it's hard to keep control out there. So something to review with our boys and girls this morning. Uh, teachers, I'd appreciate that. Now, I have several announcements, beginning with the top readers in each grade level for the AR Book Bash. So sit up nice and tall, positive Astros. In kindergarten, in fifth place for the contest was Talia Harris, who read over 24,000 words. Fourth place, Azaria Reed, read over 26,000 words. Number three, Connor Lee, read over 37,000 words. Number two, and I know that she is not here this morning, so we want to make sure she knows this, Mrs. Bailey. We have Addison Ziegelbauer, who read over 70,000 words. And our number one reader, who was the number one reader the whole way through the contest, is Sophia Partridge. I want you to listen to the amount of words a kindergarten student read, Positive Astros, over 152,000 words in three weeks. So congratulations. In first grade, um, this fluctuated the entire day Friday. I kept checking to see how our first grade readers, one person would be in first. Then they, they just kept switching because they were on fire with their reading. In fifth place in first grade, Anthony Brown read over 115,000 words. We're not hearing me, so hold on. Have you heard all the readers? Yeah, we, we, we just, okay. I'm going to start again in first grade. Fifth place was Anthony Brown, over 115,000 words. Number four is Elijah LaFail. He read over 154,000 words. Number three, Carson White Capco read over 179,000 words. Number two, Addison Honoree read over 186,000 words. And number one, reading over 188,000 words was Ava Welsh. Congratulations. In second grade, our number five reader, Navoy Dehaney, read over 147,000 words. Number four, Riley Sylvester read over 169,000 words. Number three, Ryan Pelletier read over 177,000 words. Number two, Aaron Hall read over 185,000. And number one, Mason Daly read over 319,000 words. And I did already speak to Mason this morning to let him know before he left campus. In third grade, our top readers, number five, Reagan Malaise read over 209,000 words. Number four, Jaden White Capco read over 323,000 words. Number three, Ronan Neal read over 402,000 words. Number, number two, and I did not get a chance to see him, Camden Ziegelbauer read over 431,000 words. And number one, reading over 543,000 words was Ava Pellegrino. Congratulations. In fourth grade, I want to say something. You were the top reading class um, 
in all grade levels. Fourth grade outread every single grade level. So congratulations. In fifth grade, we have Colin Davis reading over 619,000. Number four, she told me she was nervous to hear the news today. Temperance Moore read over 630,000 words. In third place, Farouk Memon read over 756,000 words. Number two, Kai Benjamin. If you were in any other grade level, you would have been number one. Kai Benjamin read over a million seventy-four thousand words, and our number one reader read more than anybody else in the entire school. Jacob Meelan read over one million four hundred sixteen thousand words in three weeks' time. So, congratulations. In fifth grade, number five was Nikayla Price. She read over 577,000 words. Number four, Nicholas Warren read over 610,000 words. Number three, Aniseta Vasquez read over 660,000 words. Number two, Caleb Ziegelbauer read over 793,000 words. And number one, and again, he was number one the entire contest, Tristan Brooks read over 980,000 words. Congratulations to our top readers. Now, the five of you will be coming to practice on Wednesday and Thursday. We will announce those times later this week. They're on the calendar, teachers, so that we can practice um, everything we need to go over for the assemblies on Friday. So Positive Astros, make sure that you are ready and on time, teachers, for those practices. Our top reading classes who will be getting a Popsicle party at recess on Friday are... In kindergarten, Mrs. Bailey's class read over 437,000 words. In first grade, Miss Silver's class, they read over 1,348,000 words. In second grade, this was a hot competition. Uh, Mrs. Listen's class read over 1,432,000 words. In third grade, again, a tight competition. Mrs. Mulligan's class read over 2,343,000 words. In fourth grade, Top reading class in the entire school for the contest. Mrs. Malia's fourth grade class, 6,138,000 words. In fifth grade, the top reading class was Mrs. Barros' class, 4,942,000 words. So congratulations, teachers. We know kids don't read without you motivating them. So congratulations. Did you, were you going to speak, Mrs.? Oh, okay, she's just here visiting today. All right, that's all for me today. Positive Astros back to the anchors. Thank you, Mr. Buxel and Ms. Talon. This week's announcement. Remember to always wear your sneakers to keep your feet safe. Now to Ms. Morrison. The weather. Okay, um, now to... Wait, there's... there's now we're going to the weather. Weather. Um, lunch for today. Maybe... Best. Okay, now over to Joseph for the weather report. We gotta keep going. Today, it, um, uh, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 80 and a low of 58 with a 0% chance of rain. Tomorrow it will be partly cloudy with an 83 um, uh, of high and 59 of low with a 20% chance of rain. Now back to the anchors. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Today's announce I mean, lunch for today. Mini cheese calzones with marinara sauce, carrot coins, green beans, choice, green beans, choice of fruit, milk. Birthdays for tomorrow. Oh my God, this is just sad. Breakfast for tomorrow: sausage or sandwich or choice of cereal with whole grain pop tart, oatmeal, low fat milk. Birthdays for today: Jordan Clay. Happy birthday! Now over to Joseph with the Daily Science Journal. Answer from Friday. The term for the distance between one crest of a wave and the next is a wavelength. The science word of the day is landfill. Definition. A place where waste material is disposed of, leg of legally by eventually burying it and covering it cover over with soil. The science sentence of the day. Recycling. Can reduce the amount of trash placed in a landfill. Science question of the day. Besides recycling, what are the two other words beginning with R that we can do to limit the amount of trash in landfills? Now back to the anchors. Thank you, Joseph. And thank you for watching Channel 5 News. We will see you again tomorrow at 8.25. Have a memorable Monday. Bye.